Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday, you made it through another week. A couple things to talk about today. I want to start off with something I saw on eBay. And um, it's funny, I just came across it searching for something else. I just thought it was so interesting that I wanted to share it with you all. Something that I would like. Ever since I was a kid, uh, you know I have an old-fashioned oil burner here since uh, it went from coal to oil burner here for about, I don't know, 60, 70 years ago, and it's the same one. And uh, to get my hot water, we use the oil burner to uh, generate heat for hot water. Now, most people, especially in the 70s when we had our first, you know, problem with oil and gas, uh, most people converted and got a hot water heater, which was uh, much more efficient than using the big furnace to uh, create hot water. Now, um, the reason my family, I guess, never got one was because they were, it seems like they were, uh, the planned obsolescence on those units were terrific. I mean, they only lasted, whatever, your, whatever you bought uh, the warranty for. If you bought a five-year warranty, five years and three months later, those things would go. If you bought an eight-year warranty, <laughs> do you ever notice there's always hot water heaters or Always you see them on the side of the road in the garbage and things like that. And the reason I noticed it as a kid is because I always thought they looked pretty new. I was like, why are these things thrown out? They don't even look old. A lot of them still had the energy efficient sticker on them and stuff. And so I was always fascinated by it. Even when I started driving a bus, I would see dozens of these things thrown out. I said, you know, these things don't last. Or they do. They last just until the warranty is up. So if you're going to buy one of those, buy a good one. Because if not, you're going to be doing the same installation a few years later. Anyway, uh, so we never had one. I never wanted one for that reason. It's just, you know, it seems like it was, it was too much work until I saw this. Check this out. On eBay, this, uh, what is it, Rudd? Uh, Old-fashioned water heater, gas-operated. And look at how this thing was made. It's made of cast iron. There's no planned obsolescence in this thing. You see those copper coils that go through that uh, interior? And you could see it. I'm just looking at it, and you could see how easy it is to operate and how cool that looks. The base that is on top, it's sitting on top, but it does have a base. that. But you know what I would love to do? I would love to pick that thing up. It's in Pennsylvania. And I would love to pick that thing up and sandblast it and put it back to the original, the way it looked. Can you imagine going into an appliance store and seeing that thing brand new? I'm sure it was a pretty penny back then, but wow, that thing was nice. And I bet you, I guarantee that thing with a little cleaning up would still work the way it did 100 years ago. Because that's the way things were made, you know? Pretty cool. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is that something that's just, just awesome or what? Okay, next up for today's project, we have these, uh, this was, we demonstrated evaporust with this pair of uh, channel locks. And you can see here from the name, that uh, says Champion DR Mint. And uh, this was an original channel lock. And uh, these are absolutely fantastic. And if you don't own a pair, I'm going to go through a few different variations they have. This is kind of their newest style. This is the 420 very similar. They got, come with the plastic handles, but um, let's clean this up. You can see what we have here. We did this here, and hopefully we'll get the rest of it to come out. So let's put the rest of it in evaporust and clean it up. Talk about some of the variations and why this is such a great tool. And if you don't have one, you should have at least one. Okay, now it's been 24 hours in the evaporust. This is actually what it will look like coming out of evaporust. It comes, uh, and I wiped it down with a hand wire brush. You can see here, there's the, uh, you get kind of a blackening of the metal. But now when you take it to the, uh, the mechanical wire brush on the wire wheel, let me show you what it looks like then. Okay, this is the actual what Evaporust does after the wire brush. This is what you can expect from your tools. Remember, any of that pitting that was done by the rust will not come out with anything other than sanding it down and getting it, uh, getting rid of those pits. Um, you can see here the what the tool looks like. You can see the handle and uh, there were the patents. You can see a little bit of, again, pitting here that we... You know, now this one was the one that I went over with the uh, the belt sand or whatever, and you could see even the evaporust darkened this. 
So you could see, uh, so there we are. That's what, and you can see the pitting here. This is what we're gonna have to put. Look at the jaws. The jaws, because they use such great steel, are in very good condition. Let me show you the difference between this kind of steel and regular ones you might buy today. Now, when I tell you the difference between American steel or really high quality steel, uh, steel that hasn't been recycled a bunch of times, this is like virgin American steel. This is some of the best steel you'll find in the world. You know, other companies like Sheffield and England were known for good steel, but you know, this was at the time when America shined and, and Channel Lock always bought great steel along with like Klein. And that's why the jaws hold up and whatnot. I want you to listen to this. Listen to me just tapping this. It sounds almost like a tuning fork. That comes because that steel is so hard and so well tempered. That's why these jaws lasted as long as they did and and the old tools like i said you can't get new tools with this quality steel although channel Lock klein they still use american steel that's what puts them uh, apart from other tools Now here's just an example of what the tool looks like before and after a coarse belt sanding. Now this is the exact same process they use at the factory. Okay, let's talk a little history real quick. 1886, a gentleman by the name of George D'Armet was a blacksmith. He started making ferrier tools for uh, local people and then he started selling them on the back of his wagon from town to town he became quite big eventually opening up his own business making different kind of tools for different people he hired some other blacksmiths the company grew and grew and grew until 1933 uh one of the chief engineers that worked there by the name of howard manning uh he patented a, a slip joint pliers or a channel lock and this is it this was my first pair as a matter of fact i bought this when i was a young boy but remember these type pliers were uh, around long before but they were like a slip joint were called like see here see how these they had like little notches and a bolt that would only turn one way and uh they were okay but they did have issues and this was a much more sturdy design with the channels cut in and that's where it came out channel lock uh these became so popular as a matter of fact that the company became known from uh, it used to be called champion drment was the name of the company you could see here that was originally the name of the company let me get the, there we go champion drment and then they changed it to channel lock and uh these uh type pliers these channel locks again became so popular that people actually refer to this type of grooved pliers as a channel lock because he got the patent in 1935. Now, channel lock made a bunch of different models using their channel lock design, the channel design. And uh, then they started experimenting with different head styles, different jaw styles. Now you can see here, this is a very nice style for gripping uh, round or cylindrical items because it's uh, curved like this, you could see. One of the reasons I'm not crazy about the Kinipex is because they have the asymmetrical design where this peak is moved back. And I'll show you what that looks like. And, and that just to me, it, it's, I find it much harder to lock up on things. Whereas I like when it's a symmetrical design, I find it works better for me. Now, um, everybody jumped on board making these type of plies. And of course, just like the wheel, everybody tries to improve it and come up with a, a better plier. So let me show you some that they've come now, up one with. One style made famous by Knipex was the, the box design, it's called. And that's where you have, uh, instead of having a side-by-side -side design, you have a, a push button, more or less, that slides up and down. These are obviously... Uh, imported knockoffs because the uh, the Kinepex are very expensive and uh, you know unless you're a professional it's hard to justify that kind of price but these these are much uh, much less uh, as far as cost goes and uh, you can see how this works it has a much more uh, varied degree of adjustment because here you have all these slots give you an adjustment where the regular 
uh, 420s only has like five different adjustments, you know, five slots where, so that gives you uh, a quite a big uh, extra adjustment. Another thing that this has, it doesn't have a pinch point back here where some of the early ones would, uh, could pinch you. I've, I've yet to be pinched by one, but it can happen. Um, and you can see here, a lot of people, especially professionals, they really like, especially the Knipex, they love them and they like the box design. I don't use these type pliers enough to notice a difference, but guys tell me that use it for professional, like everyday guys that turn wrenches, they swear by this design. There's an interesting pair of pliers uh, set uh, that you don't usually see anymore. These are called lock jaws. They were auto grips. They were big about 25 years ago, I guess, but now. And uh, what these were, uh, where they were self-adjusting pliers. Now, the big problem with a lot of tools is, you know, the, the curse of a lot of tools is if it's too complicated or it's too many parts, eventually one of those parts will fail. I think that's what happened with these. But anyway, how this works, there was a spring. You see that spring in there? And what, whatever you put into the jaws, when you squeeze down, this would move down here until it got to a point, and then the handle would lock into that those grooves and would give you... Uh, the pressure you need to, to clamp onto something. They do work. For example, if I want to lock onto this battery here like this, if I close it now, you see it'll get to the point where the jaws are parallel, then it will lock in, and now I can put tremendous pressure on that, and it'll automatically be parallel no matter where I put it. If I turn the battery on its side like this, like this, and squeeze down, the same thing will happen. It will wait till it gets parallel, and then it will lock the handle down, giving you tremendous force. Uh, you know, they were a little bit quirky. They work, they do work, but you know, again, keep it simple. What's that expression? Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what these old channel locks look like before we started. And we're calling this project done. You can see what we did here. Took it back to very close to what this would have looked like brand new. We're able to keep all the lettering. You see here, number 420 channel lock. And on top, Champion Diarment. And you can see here, Meadville, Pennsylvania, where they still are today. Um, this here, you, you could see the, we took out all that rust that was here, all the pitting. It's just a beautiful pair. And like I said, once you, uh, you back this off now to it's, it can't come out anymore because we peened it over and look how smooth that operates. There's no lubrication in here. This is just from the polishing and everything we did. So there's no lubrication as of yet. I will wax it and probably put a little lubrication on it before I store it. But there we go. This is a beautiful example of a, uh, a beautiful tool steel, wonderful design, still holds up today. I, I, like I said, I don't use them enough to notice the difference between the box design and the side-by-side -side because I never had these cant or twist out of my hands. The difference, there is a difference, though, between these and the newer style. Now, these are 420s. The higher the number, the longer. This is a 430, okay? Slightly newer. You can see it's just a little bit longer in length. You can see here, probably an inch longer. And it, they replaced the nut and bolt with a rivet. And you can see here, there it is, a rivet. Now, some people don't like the rivet because you can't take it apart. Uh, I, the way they do it at the factory, it's, you know, I like it. And let me tell you something. Um, you cannot beat these for the price that you can get these. Even today, they run $20 for a set of 420s or 430s. I don't know. They run about $20. And... If you do not have a pair of these, I totally suggest that you get a pair. Uh, you look at anybody that owns them, and nobody has anything bad to say about them. Yes, some people do like the Kinepex box design better, the professionals, but they're also four times as much. You can't compare the two. Get yourself a pair of these if you don't have one. I really think you'll enjoy it. But uh, nothing beats the vintage ones, in my eyes, as far as just the beauty of these, the fit and the finish just terrific aren't they so there we go now in order to stay competitive channel lock has started to make some of those box design uh, pliers the, instead of the traditional tongue and groove pliers they made uh, i believe they call it the 428x and 430x my good buddy scott from scott's tool thoughts did a great review on one when it first came out I don't know if they've changed anything and uh, i think they have changed some things since his review maybe they saw it Go check that out if you're interested in a pair of those. But um, 
uh, you really can't beat a pair. If you know somebody that you want to give as a gift, especially around Christmas time, for $20, it'll be one of the... To check out Channel Ox's entire line, get them while they're still made in the United States. They still employ 350 people at their plant. And unlike some of the other tool companies that were charging a ton of money for their tools, and that's why they went out, Channel Lock's still very competitive. So check them out. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Let me know what you think about that cool water heater. You have a nice day, okay? Enjoy your weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.